Good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2020 European Cartoon Award Ceremony. And welcome to Maastricht, the birthplace of the European Union, where the treaty, which bears its name, was negotiated and signed. Now, today we are celebrating the winner and the runners-up of the European Cartoon Award, along with some rather inspirational conversations with our special guests. But first, let's get started. And I'm joined here at the table by Connie Willems, uh, who is the director of Studio Europa Maastricht, and by Thomas van Neerbos, who is the director of the European Press Prize. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Now, nice guys, to be here. it's lovely to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we're going to jump right in because we've got lots to cover. Uh, Studio Europa Maastricht and the European Press Prize have founded this European Cartoon Award. Exciting. Yes. But how did the idea come about? And what was the motivation behind it? So we start first with the lady. Of course. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, well, Studio Europa Maastricht is here to uh, foster and facilitate the debate on Europe. So mm -hmm. we bring together scientists, politicians, policymakers, but also people from the general public, so mm -hmm. the citizens of Europe. Um, and uh, to foster this debate, we do all kinds of activities, events and projects. And, and the European Cartoon Award is one of those. So for us mm -hmm. to have a Cartoon Award on with the theme Europe was a very mm -hmm. natural step and we joined forces with the European Press Prize uh, as a founding partner for this uh, prize. Um, I think the power of cartoons uh, is quite obvious to a lot of people. We will also view some of the yes. uh, runners up and of course uh, we will see the winner mm -hmm. of the Cartoon Award. It's an image that, that speaks louder than a thousand words. It, it triggers something immediately. It's also, um, uh, it, it's not depending on the language you speak. Mm -hmm. And often it also triggers a certain emotion in people immediately. Um, but it's also a profession that, that I could say has a lot of tension and pressure on it. Um, so it, it is sort of a signaling function mm -hmm. uh, in society, also the health of the public debate, mm -hmm. how journalism is going. Uh, I think the trigger was also the fact that the New York Times, which is also uh, for, for a lot of journalists, the flagship mm -hmm. to um, uh, how to do journalism, they actually canceled uh, uh, to the publication of car political cartoons. So the US edition already canceled it. And in it last year, also the international edition of the New York Times canceled because of the publication of uh, a cartoon by a Portuguese cartoonist mm -hmm. uh, depicting Netanyahu as a, on a leash uh, together with Trump. So quite controversial yeah. and where the cartoonist didn't really understand or uh, didn't mean it as anything that is anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, of course, there was a lot of controversy and, and they cancelled it. And I think this is definitely a single signal that that we, we yeah, need to protect the uh, freedom of expression. And, and, uh, and yeah, I think the, it is also an encouragement for us, not just yeah. the prize, but also an encouragement of the profession yeah. of cartoonists and journalists in and general. And journalists, because they, they, they merge together, don't they? I mean, these days, journalists sure. and cartoonists play both an equally important role. For sure. And also the freedom, the right to practice free speech. This is also something very important to the European uh, of course. press, right? Yes, and at the European Press Prize, we love to give awards mm -hmm. so an extra yep. one always comes <laughs> in handy step. <laughs> yes uh, whatever it was and uh, no but we do think it's important to uh, to showcase uh, quality cartoons mm -hmm. and i think cartoons are perfect for an international community because they they can travel uh, with with huge effects uh, like we've seen sometimes in a positive way when a cartoon yeah. changes a debate throughout europe uh, sure. actually the Wars have changed uh, because of excellent cartoons, both mm -hmm. in the First World War as in the second one. Mm -hmm. uh, but also more um, more um, recent, uh, for instance, the, the cartoons by uh, Danish cartoonists mm -hmm. uh, have had huge implications for cartoonists throughout Europe and, uh, and, and a debate in Europe as well. Okay, so indeed there is a a market, if you like, almost to showcase cartoonists. And, and this is a part of the aim of this prize as well, right? Um, to allow them to 
yeah, to show I their think art. Also in support of, because if yes. cartoonists have to think twice about the theme they mm -hmm. want to cover, if they avoid certain themes, mm -hmm. uh, if they find it difficult to sell their work to mm -hmm. newspapers because of the critical voice there the they, they have, that come. Mm -hmm. uh, then I think definitely this this uh, an award like this draws mm -hmm. the attention to the importance of the the work they do mm -hmm. and and uh, also to the the work in the, yeah, the mm -hmm. freedom of expression. Absolutely, so. yeah. And I think you could yeah. see them as endangered species uh, almost. <laughs> yes. there, are, there are spaces being limited yeah. both in the newspapers yeah. and in the topics they can cover. Yeah. They get paid less and less, yeah. they get fired more and more, yeah. they get threatened, uh, not just far away but in Europe as well. Yeah. And uh, I think an award is not just uh, uh, support but mm -hmm. it's also giving people a room, ideally, uh, full of people that say you are doing important and brave work yes. and we are supporting We're, you. It's almost like a safe space, right? Which is kind of worrying that you need to designate something like that. But I mean, it's it's wonderful because it's it's a rather generous prize that this uh, this award is giving. And I, I understand that there was almost like 300 uh, applicants from around the world, which is yeah. really showing testament that there is a hunger for this type of award, right? Yeah, and, and a testament that the prize was generous enough I think it's important to be generous because uh, to showcase quality you have to get a lot of entries in yes. to get the best of the best of European uh, cartoonists. And um, I also think uh, it's important to give people the opportunity to mm -hmm. create more quality mm -hmm. cartoons. And uh, 10,000 euros gives, gives you the opportunity to collaborate, mm -hmm. to, uh, uh, to have time to mm -hmm. actually make them to buy materials, but maybe even more important in this day and age, it gives, it can give independence to cartoonists yeah. to maybe draw something that they want instead mm -hmm. of what some editor at some newspaper yes, allows. This is very true. And in this world of, you know, social media, where the world has become almost tiny because you can reach everywhere now, um, it's a perfect opportunity, isn't it, to use that and, and work with it and everything. And you were speaking earlier about uh, around Europe and in the US where, you know, cartoons are being cut from papers and, you know, terrible stories about cartoonists being threatened and yeah. imprisoned and also things like Europe, this yeah. in Europe as well. I mean, it's quite a, it's a worrying trend, isn't it? Isn't it brave of you guys to go out there with all this going on and say, hey, we're going to reward this uh, and uh, show our support? Yeah, I think today is also a joyous event, but yes. of, indeed it's also a serious, let's say, a serious message indeed. and a serial, uh, serious uh, snick signal that we really want to, to do this. Also an encouragement of, of mm -hmm. their bravery. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we are the ones that we are, are brave. Being brave. No. The, only thing, the bravest <laughs> thing we're doing is getting in the same room with them, probably. Yeah, indeed, but yeah. it's still offering a showcase, which is, you know, something that yeah. maybe they're not getting an opportunity to do in other countries or their own country, perhaps. Yeah. So For wonderful. Sure. Very good. Um, well, yeah, I've got to say, first of all, congratulations. I've had a look at the, uh, th there was a short list of 16. They were oh, very, very good. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So, I mean, we'll talk later with some people about how they chose the, the winners. But I think you guys, are you proud of how the first uh, Cartoon yeah. Award has run? It's the first edition, of yes. course. And, and it's always an experiment. Thomas has a lot of experience already with uh -huh. this, this type of uh, awarding of, of journalism. Yes. And I think the number of uh, entries uh, and the quality, for sure, is, is really impressive. And so it's not just our idea that we find it, it is a good idea uh, and an act of encouragement, mm -hmm. but it's also uh, there's a need, uh, uh, apparently. So I think we're very proud yeah. of the result as partners and we will join uh, forces again for the second That's edition. That's what I was going to ask, but I wasn't <laughs> sure if it was a secret. Is there going to be a uh, Cartoon Award in 2021? Yes, Yay. there is. Yay. <laughs> Yay. And, and we are very proud of what has what we have done this year, but we're hoping, of course, for bigger and better and uh, showcasing those uh, yeah. brave journalists yeah. even There's more. There's new news to be covered. And of yeah. course, we had deadlines like any other awards, but then yeah. Corona happened and and, and we have all kinds of uh, issues that we will see in the second edition that we look forward to that, that are worthwhile covering. Yeah, well, of course, you will take all of the challenges you encountered with this uh this year, I suppose, and COVID-19 was certainly probably a large one We will one, one day well. have a COVID-free <laughs> COVID cartoon award, award but uh, uh, maybe then, not this year. Yeah, maybe not this year, sadly. But it's very exciting to know that this is going to go on and, and grow and get bigger and bigger. I mean, it's really exciting, no? For sure. And all of that yeah. happening here in Maastricht. It's very cool. Yeah. Now, 
we have another little treat for you guys, so please stay, stay around for the moment. Um, before we move on to the next section, we're actually going to watch a little short film. And this is about the Cartoon Award, uh, European Cartoon Award 2020. And it actually shows some interviews with all, of, well, not all, most of the nominees, and how they think cartoons can foster a debate in Europe. So let's take a look. Well, I think, you know, the medium as a whole is, is great at being able to capture a moment in time. We proudly present the first edition of the European Cartoon Award, showcasing the best cartoons created in Europe. But what is the role of cartoons in today's society? And how can cartoons foster the debate on Europe? So you can use cartoons in, uh, in discussion meetings, you can use cartoons in presentations to trigger the public to think about things. They can trigger because in one view you see what the cartoon is about and uh, in a cartoon you're exaggerating uh, subjects and ideas. And so, so people are thinking, no, that's too heavy, that's too, I, I don't agree. Or people think, yes, that's right. It just works for the viewers and the people who are involved in it. They recognize it and they agree. But that's not the main group you want to reach. It is you, you want to have it in a more broader perspective so that also people who aren't really involved see this and say, hey, what, what's going on there? The fun thing about cartoons is that you can show, of course, a whole um, a subject in one picture. You cannot unsee it. Once you saw it, it's, it sticks with you. Well, I think, you know, the medium as a whole is, is great at being able to capture a moment in time. Um, you know, it's, uh, and evoke a response in a viewer in the present. So it could be laughter or empathy or, uh, you know, just agreement or even anger. And, um, Cartoons are able to do that because they can take often complicated issues and, and summarise them in a digestible image that kind of jumps out of the page or the, or the screen and uh, whacks the viewer in the face. And I think that's why they're, they're important because there's not really a medium that seems to be able to do that, um, it, which means that, you know, they often get a lot more of a visceral response than maybe a, a, an article because you actually have to read the article, whereas a cartoon will just jump out letting that for the for the future as well and, and looking at a, a cartoon from the past and going oh yeah that's what that what was going on then in, in a way that a, a photo might not be able to tell the whole story europe is such a vague entity it's such a big uh, thing to talk about and also so blurry and uh, I think that is why a lot, oh, a lot of citizens also uh, have difficulty to grasp what that is. As cartoonists, we can play a role in making it more personal and uh, less vague. Now I'm delighted to be joined by Janet Anderson, who is the chair of the panel of judges. Now, hi Janet. Hi. <laughs> this must be a pretty exciting day for you. It is. Um, it feels very strange to actually get the chance now to tell people a little bit about the process, which yeah. I think is important, and discuss the nature of cartooning, but actually to say who the winner was. I know, I can't wait. We're almost at that moment. It's it's very exciting. Um, so it, yeah, indeed, today it's the day where we sort of bring the first European Cartoon Award to a close. Um, this has been your first uh, venture with this uh, with this group. How has it been to be the uh, the chair of the panel of judges and have that very important job of selecting the winners and runners up? I think it was really important that in the panel we had um, a real combination of mm -hmm. different people. There, we had a real cartoonist on the panel himself, so um, he was able to give that perspective of 
uh, what it would have been like himself to try to come up with these ideas and the colours that he saw and, and the, the artistry, let's say. I also had a colleague who uh, selects editorial cartoons. Okay. So she was able to give her perspective of why, why not any particular things. And for me, I'm more of a generalist. I support editorial cartooning generally, mm -hmm. um, actually worldwide, and here in this European context, I want to see the best possible mechanism to enable debate to be to be encouraged, to be provoked by mm -hmm. these things. Um, so we had some actually some really very tough um, discussions where we, we actually disagreed with each other, wow. but it was a really interesting process to go through to hear but those different perspectives. I can imagine. It's, it's interesting that you mention that because fostering a debate in Europe is, is one of the key topics for this uh, first uh, edition of this European Cartoon Award. And I think that that's, um, I mean, that's what cartoons can do. Yes. Um, okay, a 500 word article, an editorial, etc. Yeah, they're really important. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm a writer myself, so I'm not going to play down the importance of that. But I think that a cartoon can, can capture an idea, a way of looking at things, and can, can, it can make you laugh, mm -hmm. it can make you angry, mm -hmm. it can make you think about something completely differently. And um, in Europe, we, I think we need to have those kinds of debates. I mean, you can hear from my accent, I'm British, yeah. um, and therefore what's been happening about the whole debate about what Europe is has partly dominated my political life for yeah. the last 20 years mm -hmm. and culminated in Brexit. Yes, uh, you've said the B word. Absolutely, oh <laughs> but it means that, that political cartoons, editorial cartoons yes. are an essential part, I think, all over Europe to keep debate going on some of the major issues that we face together as Europeans. Absolutely, and you know, we're even more so now, I think, in the times that we're living in as well, with, with everything that's, that's going on generally around, around Europe. I wanted to, to make a, a little quote about something you've said recently. You mentioned that editorial cartoons are a special type of commentary, um, that they have a lot of boxes to tick in terms of visual storytelling, connection to current events, and providing a clear message. It's a tough ask. And this is, yeah, and yeah. I, I think it probably was a tough ask, but the fact that you got so many entrants um, shows that there is a, a talent and a hunger for this type of um, uh, medium out there these days. Well, what struck me was um, we had this very uh, broad collection of, of entries, as you mm. say, I mean, several hundreds. Mm. Uh, we, as the panel, only had to consider a, a smaller proportion of those. Okay. But even amongst that smaller proportion, we didn't know uh, where they were all from. We didn't have the names of the individuals. Ah. But you look at the range of the cartoons and you can see that, I mean, there are themes that reoccur, but they were definitely being drawn from many, many, many different perspectives. And mm. when I saw the names later and I saw the, the places that they had come from, you realised that you had um, 30 different countries that they came from across Europe. Uh, quite a few have been published in regional publications, okay. which, again, is one of the incredible strengths of European journalism mm. that you, you have both national and regional newspapers mm -hmm. or, or different online publications. Um, I was, I must say, disappointed to see that out of the, the, the range, um, including the, the shortlist that we picked, the 16 who um, have been featured mm -hmm. in the, uh, the film that, that we've shown, only two were by women. So I still see that there's a way to go in terms of the numbers of women who, who feel confident to yeah. be editorial cartoonists. Um, but I'd also like to thank, you know, just, you know, there was a, a bigger committee of people around us mm. who did a lot of the preparatory work. So we, we got to see the best. I got you, yeah, because they have to whittle it down to a short list, of course, and then yeah. uh, come up. And, and that's quite interesting because uh, obviously we have one winner, but we also have two runners up, which is rather unusual, no? Well, I must say, I mean, we, we actually put together the shortlist of 16 mm -hmm. in the end, and we found it very difficult to make the choice of, of um, not to make the choice of the winner, that mm -hmm. was clear, but make the choice of, of who the runners-up should, should be, because there were so many really strong cartoons, yeah. and the two that we chose we thought were really, really excellent cartoons. Yeah. I think we get a chance to see them now. They were by Ruben Oppenheimer mm -hmm. and uh, Jupe Bertrams, and both of them are strong cartoons. Mm -hmm. They 
smash you in some way with a particular idea, a mm-hmm. particular way of seeing things. Mm. They challenge you about what your perspective is in relation to what the cartoon says itself. They're both very high quality uh, cartoons, very well drawn, um, and they're both highly relevant to debates that were going on during uh, the, the time period of, of these cartoons. So, so they provide a, you know, a counterpoint Mm-hmm. to the uh, the debate that you can see going on uh, across Europe on these particular issues. Now, I'm wondering, do you think it's time? Uh, Are you to, ready? To say who the uh, the winner is? Well, yeah, I suppose now is the moment. Uh, we're going to announce the, the winner of the first ever European Cartoon Award. So, Janet, over to you. Thank you. So, uh, the winner of the European Cartoon Award 2020 is Anne Duren. Anne. Yay. <laughs> Anne, are you there? Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Anne. Bonjour, Anne. Uh, Felicitations from me as well. What exciting news. You've just won the first ever European Cartoon Award. How do you feel? I mean, I feel very happy. Um, seeing the level of, of all the cartoons we see, uh, it's uh, uh, an honor for me to to win this prize, and I'm also very glad because uh, it's a important topic for me that I was um, drawing in this cartoon, and uh, I really hope it will uh, raise awareness about uh, this specific topic. And I was wanted to tell you um, why it was that we, as the jury, liked this cartoon so much. Um, yeah. It's your cartoon, it's your interpretation, but for me and for my fellow panelists, um, we felt that it was a clever cartoon. It was a recognizable cartoon. We, everybody recognized this game, but it was clever the way that you played with it. The theme itself was highly universal and uh, highly important, we felt, across all of the countries of Europe. It was beautifully drawn Mm. and beautifully put put together. Um, So altogether, um, we felt that it made a big impact in terms of helping people get a different perspective on the debate. It had a little bit of cleverness and funniness about it, which always helps Mm. to get people involved but it was really on the nose. It was it was just it was right uh, to 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 try to help people to understand what is really going on. So thank you very much for making this cartoon. Thanks to you for organizing this event, and thanks to all the jury members. Wonderful! It is very beautiful as well. It's a, it was a very stunning uh, choice that you made. And may I ask, are you already thinking about your next projects, and will you potentially enter the European Cartoon Award 2021? Um, my next, uh, yeah, I will keep on. Uh, I think drawing a lot about uh, ecological issue, and now with the coronavirus uh, topics everywhere, it's. Uh, also a thematic, uh, I guess, we are all drawing a lot uh, about, yeah. specifically here in Madrid, where the situation is a bit crazy right now. We uh, learned earlier that there is going to be a 2021 European Cartoon yes. Award, so, <laughs> yes, uh, which is very exciting. So you never know, we might see you on the, the winner's block again next year, or perhaps <laughs> as, a, as an entrant, you never know. It's uh, very good news for everybody. I think we, we all need this kind of support and... And thanks a lot for that. Wonderful. And congratulations to you once again. Well done. Now, it's getting a little cosy here in the studio. I'm still joined at the table by Janet. We still have our winner, Anne, on uh, Skype. And we've also been joined by one of the runners-up, Joop Bertrams. Hello. Thank you. (laughs) Welcome. Uh, Welcoming me. You're very welcome. Now, how does it feel to be a runner-up in the first European Cartoon Award? It feels great, but first of all, I have to congratulate uh, Anne with her uh, excellent cartoon, which very deserves kind. it very well to be the first uh, prize winner. It's a great cartoon. I noticed it before, uh, and great 
great cartoon. <laughs> it is a beautiful one, isn't yeah. it? Very, but they're they're all fabulous in each in their special way, right? It's uh, it's just like any art. It's so personal. It, it speaks to you in different ways. But uh, your cartoon, um, I'm going to introduce it with a little bit of a quote that you've made. A political cartoon shows at once what can be said. It often evokes an emotion through humor, which conveys a message even more emphatically. Now, can you tell us how this links into uh, your piece of artwork for this competition? For this uh, uh, Vatican uh, cartoon, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think uh, <laughs> as we can show it and uh, look at it now, it, this could also be a very Catholic uh, mouth mask, uh, but, but, but it isn't. It, it was a, a cartoon that I made uh, for uh, the uh, Episcopal Summit in, in the Vatican, where, where the uh, abuse, uh, sexual abuse mm -hmm. of, of priests in mm -hmm. the Catholic Church were discussed after a long, long, long time, should have been uh, happened longer before. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, it, it, it happened. And uh, of course, not all bishops are uh, malicious uh, uh, wrongdoers, mm -hmm. but to make it a little bit stronger, mm -hmm. you use all of them. And because yeah. they all uh, diminished the, 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 the problem and they all uh, didn't come forward and say, uh, let's uh, do something about it. Yeah. So it, it you can use them all. It was a shocking cartoon. Wasn't it? You, it was in your face, mm -hmm. uh, the use of the colour, the use of the position of the men and so on. And um, it, for me, it was very, very much said, uh, I take a position on this. And uh, for me, I wondered, I mean, do you feel right as a cartoonist to take a position like that? I, th I think I, I should do so. I'm, I'm uh, especially I'm, I, I had a, I was born in, in the neighborhood here of Maastricht in mm -hmm. Ormond, where most of them are, are, are Catholics, mm -hmm. and uh, I was a servant in the Catholic Church as well. Never uh, experienced any mischief, but nevertheless, uh, it, it's close to 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 my own life, mm -hmm. and things that are the closer things happen to your own life the stronger you have to react. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's very easy to react strong on, on things that, that, that are happening on the other side mm -hmm. of the world and, and have a meaning about it. But when it depends on your, and when it comes to your own surroundings, then it, it's most important to act fierce. Indeed, yeah. Uh, Anne, may I ask, as a cartoonist yourself, do you feel the same as you? Yeah, I was... Uh, thinking that uh, I totally agree with this because I think when when there's a strong emotion, usually the cartoon will be better. Like um, we draw so like a therapy, you know, we, when there's strong emotion, uh, reading newspaper, new, specific news, usually it creates something, I think, in the brain and, and, and the need to draw it. Mm -hmm. And usually the cartoon is, is stronger like the one uh, from the it's a strong uh, visual. Ruben Oppenheimer was our second runner-up, and he couldn't be here today, but he actually did, I believe, study here at the Maastricht Academy of Fine Art. So we feel that he's, he's sort of with us in spirit. So he's from, uh, he studied here in, in the city. Um, I'm going to quickly go on because I wanted to ask you guys another question, and this is actually one that's been a bit the topic of today, and that is how you think cartoons can foster a debate about Europe. And what do you think about this uh, remark and about fostering a debate in Europe with cartoons and art? Cartoon is a part of any political and societal debate, so uh, European as, as any of them. But uh, yeah, the, the good thing of cartoon, because it's so visual, and uh, when you don't have words, uh, it can reach a lot of, of different people, like uh, different languages, with uh, different languages within Europe. And uh, uh, because, yeah, it's so visual, it can like, um, spread information and, and create debate a bit faster than reading an article you have to translate or, or anything. Very true, actually. We forget that all of these different languages across Europe, we don't lose anything in translation here. And you found that a bit, Janet, when you guys were looking and, and making your decisions. 
cartoonists are playing their part to stimulate debate and get people actually interested in what's going on. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if we don't think about it, then these politicians will run the world without us joining in. Well, there you go. <laughs> See you for nodding along there as well. Yeah. Um, but this does actually raise a thing. You talk about cartoonists around Europe and, and, and all of this, but it brings up another question, and that's some of the associated dangers that come for a cartoonist these days. And um, there is a question raised, and it refers to an article in a recent uh, European Center for Press and Media Freedom um, uh, piece, which speaks about cartoonists around Europe, around the world, who are being imprisoned, who are being forced into exile, who are receiving death threats even. And it raises the question if cartoonists and journalists um, need to be somehow protected Every uh, government should protect its, its, its civilians. Yeah. Uh, so uh, also cartoonists, yeah. it's, it's, you are just a civilian, and, mm. and, and you should protect them. And uh, in the countries which are governed well, this is happening mm. in, in France, in, 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 in Europe, maybe not in, in Hungary, uh, mm. and not in Poland. And that's the thing which, which is very important mm. in, in the debate in Europe as well. Those countries are members of the European Union, mm -hmm. but don't uh, act like uh, real European and yeah. in, in, in treating their, their, their journalists. Yeah, it's a, ver it's a worrying trend, though. And may I ask you, as a, a French native who's, who's living in, in Spain, how do you feel about this? Do you ever feel scared, for want of a better word? Um, I'm not, because usually I'm not into too controversial thematic uh, with my cartoon. But uh, for sure, I'm anxious for my colleagues because uh, among cartoonists, it's kind of a, a small, we all know each other. And uh, because of a lot of association who, who put us together. So, so yeah, we're with about a lot of colleagues uh, that uh, are receiving threats around the, the world or Nowadays, also like being fired by newspaper, it's uh, harder and harder to live from cartoon and and uh, and uh, to be able to to express uh, all our ideas uh, through the cartoons. Yeah, indeed, that freedom of speech thing is raising its head again. Well, I think we have to recognise that Europe is one of the places that does actually guarantee the possibility mm. of freedom of speech uh, for people um, and. Um, will pay cartoonists to yeah. do their work. If you consider what it's like to be a cartoonist in the Middle East, uh, uh, where you have a lot of death threats, uh, in Asia, where it's impossible to, to do some work, even some parts of Africa, mm. um, we do have some degree of privilege mm. here uh, in, in Europe. Um, but um, I think it's still a privilege that has to be um, defended, fought for, and recognised that, that, yeah, Freedom of the speech, freedom of speech isn't an automatic. Mm -hmm. We can just uh, we can lose it quite easily unless we fight for it. Absolutely, and this is probably why awards like this are, are such a good idea. They keep it uh, in the forefront. And how how do you feel? Do you feel the same that cartoons are important in in society today? People take less and less the time to read to read um, the news. It's uh, one sentence or. And the cartoon, because it's so visual, maybe gives the opportunity to create debate for people who not really take the time to read uh, the news uh, deeply. So it can help about that, but it's not enough. I mean, I really hope all the cartoons might um, create the envy to the need to these people to, to read more about uh, specific subjects and to, to get informed. Thinking about um, the way that we live in a very highly polarised society at the moment, and you see these very nasty debates going on online um, between uh, people who essentially just shout at each other and just and use nasty words you know, to be a bit delicate about it to, towards each other. And cartoons are very different from that mm. because even though they are, as I said, you, for example, your cartoon you, was is very shocking it still is actually making a point, a political point, a sharp and interesting point, which should, as Anne says, actually create debate 
rather than just provoke, um, you know, swear words mm. back for, from people. So I'm hoping certainly that this form of um, putting out a commentary in a visual form helps to make people discuss and debate. Mm. Um, but I'm concerned, mm. honestly, that because our world is so polarized that perhaps cartoons yes. become polarized. I agree, and, 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 and uh, cartoons are uh, very often used in schools as well. Mm. But for instance, uh, the local syndicate in, in the United States with, uh, which uh, delivered uh, cartoons to schools, uh, lots of them, but it, it's a big problem because they don't want these cartoons anymore because they are too uh, anti-Trump or too, 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 too anti-establishment. Mm -hmm. So it, they are losing this contact, which is quite a thing, I think. So it would be nice if we could try to make cartoons, it would be good if we could make cartoons things that help engender political debate, which is, I think, what Anne's cartoon is very much about. It's about saying, let's talk about it. Yeah. Mm. Would you say that, Anne? That your cartoon was saying? Yes, exactly. I, the same observation about uh, a more and more polarized society. And for me, a good cartoonist is um, a ca it, someone who's making a cartoon not to, to, to give his idea, but to create a debate, to make to think, to make people uh, think about something. So. So yeah, it's easy to me. Oh, Trump is is a stupid man, and just draw about this. But uh, yeah, we we need cartoons who, who make us think about uh, why so many people vote for someone, or, or just to to understand uh, the the society in, in a uh, wider way. They carry a lot of power, right? These cartoons. You can discuss a problem time after time after mm. time, but if you make cartoons about it. They are totally different every time with telling the same story. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's much more interesting to mm -hmm. watch cartoons and, and see the, the whole world go uh, pass by than, yeah. than having a text that is always the same. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to bring things to a close. I'm going to say thank you to Anne for joining us all the way from uh, from Madrid. Thank you, you, for being here. Thank you, Janet, for no your problem. input. Thank you. And thank you guys for joining us and for being here with us in Maastricht at this special ceremony for the first European Cartoon Awards. Please do come and visit the exhibition in Maastricht. For more information, you can check out maastrichteurope.nl. So in the meantime, take care, stay safe, and see you at the 2021 European Cartoon Awards. Thank <laughs> you.